Am I audible, guys? Yeah, okay. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to say that last week I've been uh, doing a lot of reading, and uh, some of you know I'm also doing my studies. I'm studying my masters, and so as a part of some of the reading assignments that I had, I came upon a lovely uh, uh, write-up, an article by uh, two two men, David Mathis and and um, Matt Chandler, and uh, their reflections on the Advent season. I've taken a part of it from 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 some of their uh, reflections, and then I've also wanted to add my reflections and my thought. Okay, so I want to start off. I've never done this before, but I want to start off by showing you a WhatsApp chat that I received from a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, just last week. Uh, this friend of mine is not from NBCC. Is not from Pune. Uh, uh, I have I have uh, hidden her name as well, but I just want to show you a chat that I had with her. Can you see it on screen? So this is what she's saying. <clears throat> Karan, th requesting you for prayers. We, my mother, my sister-in-law, my nieces, sister and her family, and me, were to, so we're supposed to travel to Ramchi today, but we cancelled last night due to Omicron. My sister wants us to drive down to Lucknow to be with mum. But my husband does not get along with my family. In fact, his hatred is so strong that he makes sure that he conveys it. I want to visit mum, but I really want things to get better between my family and my husband. They are welcoming, but he just rejects them. Sadly, Christmas has been the worst time of the year for me since my marriage. I am waiting for a breakthrough in this area or I am waiting for the rapture, whichever comes first. I am sorry about the rant. Let's be honest, <clears throat> not all is merry and bright for everybody in the world today. To some of us, the season may genuinely feel like the most wonderful time of the year. But all of us know deep down that for everybody, for some of us, it's, it's never bright and merry. Some Christmases we feel the burden and the weight more than the others. I want to, I want to start off by, by asking each of you to just imagine a few situations. Okay? Think of people who have lost family members or died during the Christmas season even if it was many years ago, every Christmas, the memory haunts them. Think of people whose marriages broke during the Christmas season. Every Christmas would push them to think of unwelcoming memories. Think of those who very recently would have lost their jobs, lost their projects. They've been pressing into losses in their business just weeks and months before Christmas. Think of those whose family members were diagnosed or battling with diseases like cancer in the year. Christmas has unwelcoming memories for them. Think of those people who have lost one or both of, our, or of their parents this year. Last year, uh, NBCC supported uh, a few pastors in Pune, pastors, families of pastors in Pune who lost one or both of their parents. Think of them. What would Christmas be like for them? Think of those who lost their children this year. Think of those who have been battling with depression, battling with suicidal thoughts, battling with sorrow the whole year. Think of caregivers, caregivers especially for patients who are with schizophrenia. Think of caregivers of schizophrenic patients who cannot even get a break during Christmas. Think of those whose business venture, investment, suddenly experienced bankruptcy and financial crisis. Think of those people whose spouse walked away from their marriage. For so many today who are listening to Christmas music or alone, because nobody 
because they don't have friends and community. Think of those people who have experienced sexual abuse, especially days and weeks before Christmas. Think of that child who wasn't able to pass their exam and go to the next grade. They would be doing Christmas you know, with, with, with a new bunch of friends, but be missing their old friends. Think of residents of unsafe countries who have had to evacuate their homes and start their lives from scratch this year. For example, people in Afghanistan. More so, think of residents who were unable to evacuate from unsafe countries and are left helpless in an unsafe environment this Christmas. I've only, I mean, I've just penned down about 15 or 16 categories. But you know something? I know for sure that our members at NBCC itself fits into at least 50% of these categories. For most of us, it's truly an opportunity to celebrate merriment, cheer and joy with our family members and I'm really happy for all of us, you know, if you're there. But for others, the talk of joy and merriment at Christmas can make our sorrow feel all the more intense. All the talk of joy and merriment can make our pains all the more painful. Normal life is hard enough and it's even harder when the world seems to be singing, ringing bells and pretending that suddenly everything is merry. For those people, the pressure to feel the joy of Christmas can make joy all the more difficult. And so as I get into the details of scripture this morning, as we look at scripture and we look at the word of God, and we look at, you know, uh, uh, unwrapping what God wants to hear, uh, God wants us to hear. I want to start off with a very important premise, and that is this. The real Christmas does not ignore our pain. The real Christmas does not ignore our pain. When we open the pages of scripture and we turn to that first Christmas, we find without doubt, without doubt, not all was merry, not all was bright, not all was happy. The new glimpses of a merrier or of merriness that emerge actually fall against a backdrop of misery, of sadness. Of, of injustice and even disorder. Those first rays of brightness that you know that we read about when Jesus was born, it didn't just simply shine bright, it shone bright in a land of deep darkness. Okay, I'm going to request uh, somebody if they can just read a portion, this particular portion of scripture, Luke chapter 2, 4 to 21. And uh, uh, I mean, the message is going to be a lot more than just this passage, but can somebody volunteer to read Luke 2 verses 4 to 21? Luke chapter 2 verses 4, verses 4, 4 yeah. to 21. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea. Yeah. Uh, I like in short. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see these things that has, that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. <clears throat> So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who had heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of the purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Thank you, blessed and gracious. For thousands of years, God's chosen people had waited for the fulfillment of this one promise. Okay. 400 years between the Old and New Testament, for 400 years, God seemed to have gone a little silent until he began to cry out uh, as a newborn in, in the town of Bethlehem. Remember I said earlier that the real Christmas does not ignore pain. Let us ponder on the pains and miseries, the disorder and the, and the atrocities that happened around the first Christmas. I'd like you to first consider Mary and Joseph. First consider Mary. She, I mean, she was excited for sure. There was anticipation when the angel announced, uh, uh, you know, but, but with this excitement, there was also confusion. There was also some level of misunderstanding. She would, uh, when the angel comes and says, soon you, you are impregnated, Soon, it's going to be showing, right? So, so, so it's going to come across the community that she's betrothed, but unmarried. Soon, the watching eyes of her native Nazareth would make her the subject of their whisperings, gossips and judgments. Even three decades later, and I don't know if you've, if you've seen this in scripture, when Jesus was in his life and ministry, when he was almost 30. 30 plus years, even decades later, later, the enemies of Jesus would play this card of, uh, you know, they implied to Jesus that the, they were not that they were not born of sexual immorality, but he was. And that you can read that in John chapter eight. If Jesus could not have left behind such rumors, think of Mary. How much more Mary? Now I consider Joseph. He was betrothed. He was found to be with the child before their marriage, in many ways disgrace. Dis what disgrace would have attended this news for him? How deeply hurt he must have been to find her pregnant. She seemed so, she had seemed so wonderful, so chaste, so favored by God. And suddenly, what kind of dreams would have shattered for Joseph? What turmoil he must have faced. For however long those hours and days would have dragged on between learning of her pregnancy and then the angel later appearing to him in a dream. He learned of her pregnancy and only later the angel uh, you know, appeared to him. 
what was he going through between that period joseph the angel says son of david do not fear to take mary as your wife for that which is conceived in her is from the holy spirit he has got to have no he has no other option but to trust the angel trusting the angel's word comforted his own soul but momentarily he would have gone through a little bit of lapses isn't it and word of his dream wouldn't stop the gossip around town what's he going to tell people no yeah yeah my wife is pregnant we are not yet married my wife is pregnant but you know what an angel told me something what are people in the town going to think of him that's the first pain i'd like to remind <laughs> you know confusion during christmas time that's this is the first christmas we're talking about another pain of Chris, of the first christmas i want to address is suffering and sin so while joseph and mary were truly in pain or truly confused and truly uh, 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 com- confused and complex the pain and sin of suffering was the reason why jesus came in the first place this is what the uh, angel told joseph you shall call his name jesus for he will save people from their sins every jew every jew agreed that god's people needed to be saved but in their minds they were thinking of this saving the salvation so to say this saving this redemption to be from the romans the dominion and the occupation of the romans in israel the coming of christ was it was at least a reminder of probably uh, uh, you know their political world but the angel announcing to Ro- uh, joseph did not mention anything of rome christmas in this age does not guarantee actually merriness and brightness and happy not yet at least if god's people were not needy there would have been no christmas if the nations were not desperate for redemption there would have been no christmas christ did not come you know as a to play a cameo role or to play you know a movie star he's not come to put on a show he came to bring life to the dead he came to rescue those who were perishing he came to heal the sick but really he came to destroy the work of the devil friends this darkness that was there of sin and suffering it was compounding for centuries the face of this earth it was to such this it was to this disfigured world that jesus christ came as a second pain i want to sh- talk about the, the first christmas the third pain i want to talk about is this town of bethlehem so when it came time for the child to be born the town of bethlehem would be the most surprisingly odd very 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 uh, un unpres- that wasn't the place where a king should be born the most surprising reception for a king the angel had said that this was the messiah when he was born in bethlehem this was the long anticipated king there was no royal welcome nothing was uh, 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 no palace he is a king right no palace no royal welcome no jerusalem and the reason i say no jerusalem is because jerusalem was the city jerusalem was the center of of all activity that happened in royalty there was no jerusalem instead miles outside the big city was a little town known as the it, it was known as the hometown of david the nation's greatest king from a thousand years before that is david but it wasn't really known for quality because it was surprisingly a humble place especially for the birth of a king many people think it was it was an inn or a guest room that jesus was you know they, uh, uh, they tried but the, the the real point the real point of that thing is to say that there was no place there was no place to welcome and receive the king of kings obviously 
obviously people are going to be thinking, can this really be the Messiah? Can this really be Christ? If there's no place for him, that's a pain during the first Christmas. And Mary had to lay her firstborn in a manger. So whether it was the worst case scenario or whether it was not the worst case scenario, a manger that is, we all cannot deny that that is not the ideal place for a baby to be born. So further humbling came in regards to people who didn't show up and actually people who did show up. If, if, if truly the baby was royalty, royal people didn't show up. There were no local dignitaries, there were no national dignitaries, nobody. As far as we know, as far as, because the Bible doesn't mention anything. Who really did visit? There were shepherds who visited. The, and so the visit of these blue-collar shepherds only reinforced, giving the promises that, the, that, 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 that this was the Messiah. What a long, humble and painful road this would have been to his appointed glory. Another pain during the first Christmas was there was tragedy in the city. There was tragedy. This was probably, for me, as I, was, as I was reading through and preparing, this was the most horrific, most horrific thing, most horrific event that preceded the first Christmas. In my opinion, this is such a big tragedy, isn't it? Dozens and dozens of toddler boys up to the age of two were ripped from their parents' arms. They were slaughtered by an insecure, vicious tyrant like Herod. Herod, the Bible says in the book of Matthew, he became furious and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all in that region who were two years old or or less. Friends, you need to realize that when dozens and dozens of babies were, or, uh, male child, male children were, were ripped away and, and were slaughtered really, this was not a slaughter of, in, uh, of, of guilty people. In the Bible we see guilty people being slaughtered and treated, uh, you know, and dealt with their sins. But like Pharaoh tossing a newborn Hebrew sons into the Nile, even this was a slaughter of innocent, of the innocent. I, I really want us to think of the pain that was there in the wake of that first Christmas. I'd like you to just imagine, friends, I mean, and, and I know this is not going to, I, I really hope this will, think of this, think of, think of our times in India. If, if days before Christmas, somebody, you know, asked, kill all the children less than two, what kind of Christmas would that be? And again, of course, we realize the, the sovereignty of God. God rescues his son from this slaughter to preserve him for a later and even more horrific slaughter, actually. Okay. But Joseph and Mary, though still having their son, would have the pain and the discomfort of having to flee to Egypt to save his life from this wicked king Herod. This was a flight that other parents, a flight other parents would have been happy to exchange in, uh, happy to take in exchange for not losing their sons. Yet, Mary's time was going to come. There was a tragedy going to come even in Mary's life soon enough in three decades. The last pain of the first Christmas is, uh, is something that, so, so for Mary, shock would have come soon after she gave birth. I'll tell you why. She presents the baby to the temple and an old man named Simeon confirmed his sense that this child would be the Messiah, this child would be Christ. But not just that, if you read, he turned and looked at Mary in the eye and spoke to her a prophetic word. And this is what he told her in, in Luke chapter 2. This is, this is the mother of a child who she's just dedicated to the temple. And Simeon over there looks at, 
uh, uh, Mary and says this behold this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is opposed a sword will pierce through your own soul also so that thoughts for many hearts may be revealed her child being the Christ being the Messiah it, just because he's the Christ, just because he's the King of Kings, just because he's the Lord of Lords, he would not be immune to controversy, enemies and pain. Mary herself, Simeon is telling Mary, Mary herself will have a sword pierced through her own soul. I, again, just imagine if, if you know, the many mothers who are there Come and bring your child to me for a child dedication. And and as you are there, as I dedicate the child, I'm holding the child, and I look to you, mothers, and I tell you, this child will become a, a, a sword piercing through your soul. I would never do that, okay? The point I'm trying to say is that I, I'd like you to just imagine the events of what's happening in that first Christmas. Ultimately, of course, Mary's sword, soul was pierced with a sword. With the, with, with the death of Jesus Christ. And in the light of all that I shared earlier, and in the light of messages like this, which I shared earlier from my friend, in the light of so many people who have, who have you know, struggled with business or struggled with sickness and struggled with all of this, in the midst of people who are experiencing pain, What assurance really is there for us? With what face do we really come to celebrate Christmas? The assurance of the first Christmas was that there would be joy that is deeper than sorrow. I'm saying it for the third time. The real Christmas does not ignore our pain. This, my friends, is the assurance of every Christmas because of the first Christmas. The life that came into the world that first Christmas was not to be an easy one. Jesus' life was not easy at birth, not at infancy, not in adulthood. In fact, the opening words of John's Gospel says this. He came to his own and his own people did not receive him. He was in the world, yet the world did not know him. In fact, Isaiah prophesied something similar. He would be despised, he would be rejected. He would be a man of sorrows. He would be acquainted with grief and indeed he was. But this life, painful and challenging as it would be, would not be more than the deep joy that actually could sustain Jesus Christ, Joseph and Mary and even us today. So I want to talk about this great joy that is there. The great joy of Christmas is not in place of sorrow. It actually goes deeper than sorrow. This great joy that we talk about in the gospel does not ignore, does not kick off the pain and sorrows for a day. Hey, today it's 25th, just kick it off, let's just experience joy. When, when Christmas is over, bring back the pain. It's, that's, that's not the real meaning of Christmas. The great joy goes deeper. The joy that the angels announced in the first Christmas is a kind of joy that sustains you and me in the midst of our sorrows, in the midst of our pain. Christmas does not ignore our pain, but neither does it allow us to wallow and uh, wallow in them or you know live in that kind of self pity. Christmas takes our pains seriously. Christmas takes our pains more seriously than any other secular celebration. It reminds us that God understands and sees pain. And we know it because that was that was the very context of the first Christmas. Pain, misery, tragedy welcomed Christmas. Christmas takes our pain so seriously. For spouses that have walked off marriage this year, for spouses that are married but living divorced lives, for, for children who have been taken away from their families, for businesses that were, have gone through financial crisis, for people, caregivers who are unable to take breaks this, this Christmas season, for people who have just been diagnosed with an incurable uh, 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 disease like cancer, 
Christmas takes our pain more seriously than any other celebration that you can I can and that the reason because of that and the reason is because God has seen pain himself God understands he hears our cry for help and he himself has come to deliver us that's the real story of Christmas Chris Christmas in this age does not guarantee merriness and brightness and happiness not yet not yet but even though this is true even though it is true that christmas does not in this age does not guarantee merriment it does not guarantee brightness christmas promises that merriness and brightness are actually breaking in it's coming at its best every christmas day at its best 25th i mean the season of christmas uh, uh 25th christmas 24th night and i mean there's no fixed date but this season at best it gives us a peak it gives us a glimpse of an uncompromised joy that is coming it gives us a glimpse from afar of a fortiest of merriment and brightness and happiness that is coming in fact you know like i mean paul talks of this uh, of this theme he says in 2 corinthians he he was also uh, you know a man full of sorrows he experienced a lot of sorrows he says we are sorrowful yet always rejoicing what a paradox for the I, I, and yet what hope we you and i could be some of us could be overwhelmingly sorrowful at christmas and yet in christ god can give us the opportunity to rejoice not to replace sorrows not to ignore our sorrows not to deny our pain in the midst of pain earlier uh, earlier this uh, uh, when i started the talk i i read out 15 or 18 categories of people who have who have who have you know gone through could have gone through uh, uh, serious tragedies this year serious sorrows this year and i also mentioned i am aware that our nbcc members fit into at least 50% of those categories every december every december advertising companies promise us that perfection can be ours i came to uh, chennai a uh, day before yesterday and uh, i mean just driving from the airport to the hotel and then we went out for a bit every uh, every every second kilometer are christmas offers in the malls or you know it's, it's all there everywhere and it's not in chennai it's there everywhere and they're saying an offer uh, uh, unbelievable christmas offers okay uh, on a on a mobile company ad or something like that every december amazon or uh, mintra or flipkart and any of these shopping they promise us that this can be your perfect christmas every december advertising companies promise us that joy can actually be ours this year because the iphone which is otherwise worth a lakh is available to you at 5000 rupees it's just amazing talking to boxes i really hope i i wanted to be there in front of you when i share this anyway but every christmas that perfection never comes true you know that every christmas this perfect this perfect joy never lasts it's never comes true and yet for you and me who embrace the gospel this perfection this joy can actually be ours when jesus comes again so this season you can really find out all that you want not by looking at the christmas day but by looking beyond christmas if you look at christmas day as your sole means of joy as your sole means of hope it's not going to last but if you look beyond christmas if you look at not just christmas for the next few years if you look at the time when jesus returns joy can actually be yours and mine jesus begins to become enough for you and me as i conclude as i conclude i want to share this i don't know what kind of a year it's been for you i don't know what are the events that you had 
you know, uh, of sorrows and joy that you would have gone through. Last week, of course, I, I put this message on the group that Anita just lost a family member and in a few days she's getting married. And I and I specifically asked for prayers that 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 pray that Anita would be able to understand this extreme emotions in such a short span of time. And that's not just Anita's story, that's all of our stories. There's been, there's been sorrows, there's been tragedies, and yet we're looking forward to a time where there will be joy. I don't know what kind of a year you've had. Maybe for you it's been that joy to the world kind of year. Okay, Perhaps your Christmas season is the best season. You had a lovely, you had a great time. I, 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 and if that's how you experienced this year and Christmas, I want to remind you, uh, hallelujah, praise God, but that's only a shadow of, of, of better joy that is to come. Okay, uh, I, I, I hope that you would uh, uh, look forward to something better. But for those of us, and I think that's the majority today, for those of us who have not experienced the joy to the world kind of Christmas, if you've been beaten up this year, if you've been banged up this year, I wonder if this is your first year, if this is your first Christmas without the love of your family members, without the love of your spouse, without the love of, of someone who is really dear to you. If this is your first Christmas where you experience loneliness or if this is or if you experience Chris, uh, loneliness every year like my friend shared on the whatsapp chat right that, that, that i shared with you or if this is the first christmas where you've realized i'm stuck in my life there's nowhere i can go or if you're struggling or if you're sick or somebody who you love is sick or something happened this year in your life that made you aware of how delicate things are in life I want to remind you and me, remember, this is not all there is to life. God is involved in the mess of this world just so that he can share his joy with you now, but also to bring you and me to perfection one day when Jesus comes back. Invite him. Keep walking through the valleys and the peaks of this life. Keep walking through the valleys and the mountains, the good times and the not so good times. Just as whatever you do, keep looking forward. Friends, Christmas finishes quickly every year. All we have is 24 hours. What we look forward to soon lies behind us. I am pretty sure that for a majority of your homes, it's beautifully decorated with Christmas things. But soon these decorations will get packed away. Christmas finishes so quickly every year. The decorations will get packed away. What you look forward to will soon lie, lie behind you. But this year, if you look beyond Christmas, if you look beyond the 25th December, hope and joy need not end. Friends, it need not end. Because you can look forward to a day that will never end and a future that will never disappoint. You can look at the God who came to lie in that manger and then you can look forward to a day when he comes again. This is, in, in closing, I just want to do something that I... So, so the truth is, let me tell you, I, I'm a person who... Who, who, who deeply charismatic I believe in the I believe in the fact that the Holy Spirit speaks even today and uh, but I I usually do not share some deep such deep insightful you know uh, uh, perceptive prophetic impressions but I think I have something today this Christmas as I was preparing I want to share a word with each of you and like I've said it before if if this is all you hear this Christmas, hear this clearly, hear this loudly. In John chapter 14, when Jesus washes his disciples' feet, actually after Jesus washes his disciples' feet, 
he predicts their denial he predicts their betrayal and in John chapter 14 now he moves towards them he's washed their feet he predicts that this his denial he predicts his betrayal and now he's moving towards his disciples to comfort them okay let me just read these three verses this is what he's saying do not let your hearts be troubled you believe in God believe also in me my father's room my father's house has many rooms if that were not so would I have told you if that were not so would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come back and take you to be with me that you may also be where I am I believe prophetically that this same Lord Jesus Christ wants to come towards us and comfort us and I know it may sound very generic I mean it's it's what we do you know it's what pastors do right we just speak words of comfort and encouraging and I think it's a little deeper this time for me at least this Christmas friends my heart is touched with sympathy for those who are lonely amongst us of course amongst the world as well for those who are lonely within NBCC my heart is touched with sympathy for those who are bitter for those who are heartbroken and unhappy especially with work especially with their bosses especially with their families fathers and mothers but but deeply with their spouses my heart is touched with sympathy for those who are angry those who are sorrowful those who are troubled and low spirited my heart is touched with sympathy for those who are feeling dark for those who are feeling miserable for those who are feeling depressed my heart is touched with sympathy for those who have gone through tragedy and upsetting regrets John chapter 14 verse 3 as the Lord comforts his disciples he says I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am that's my encouragement for each of us who have gone through the most sorrowful regretful bitter heartbroken lonely dark moment miserable moment of our lives Jesus this is this is consistent theological truth that Jesus will come back I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am may this Christmas remind you and me that we can look beyond 25th January may this Christmas remind us that what you look forward from today will soon be behind you but by looking forward to Christ coming again every unpleasant and discouraging moment will be put to rest this my friends is our hope it's the hope of each of us it's the hope of every one of us behind these boxes behind these zoom boxes it's the hope of each of us I'm going to request Tarang to just play a song if you can just reflect on the lyrics and uh, and then I'll close in prayer and we'll if uh, and if you are willing we could probably take a group photo but uh, but let's just play a song for now I'll share the lyrics Tarang that song can you see uh, the lyrics on the screen yes what can you see turn your eyes right turn your eyes thank you Stop the call.